So we are recording right now. Thank you so much uh, to this panel. We are doing majors and minors week this week. So this is day two of a series that we, we've been doing, which is day one past on Tuesday. Today is Wednesday. So we are talking about technology. We have different panels across the day. So um, I'm very pleased to collaborate with Dr. Mary Cooper and the Alumni Club uh, staff that um, is being very supportive with this and, and that our alumni are is willing to share this information with us. So thank you. Thank you so much for um, collaborating with us and for being available with this time with us. Um, tomorrow we'll have another session coming up. So let's focus on the technology piece. So I'm gonna do some housekeeping items and reminders right now. If you have any questions, um, go ahead and type it down and we'll get to it real quick and throughout the conversation. I want this to be a more of a conversation um, just be very informal and to have shared some of the skills that you guys have with um, with our students. Um, this will be recorded. It will be uploaded on our Maze uh, Center YouTube channel at Tamusa Maze within 24 hours. So for any of the students that are, are uh, connecting with us, are joining with us, um, it will the material will still be available after that. So let's get started with our first. Um, alumni and it's uh, Sa Hyun, class of 2018 computer information system which is currently um, she's currently employed at Def uh, Logics is that the right pronunciation okay as a technical writer and um, her words of encouragement is freshman year can be one of the most exciting times of growth and self-discover be patient with yourself and be flexible in your goals as your interests will evolve over time. What your major is doesn't necessarily indicate where you're going to be, uh, where you're going to end up, right? So develop a project portfolio and network with professionals in your preferred industry. Take advantage of the resources that the university provides to you at little or no cost. So, um, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, learn about your le financial literacy, time management, leadership skills, and your top strengths. Be, av be aware of when you are stressed, set firm boundaries, and take the necessary time to unwind, chat with a friend, or talk to a counselor. Finally, enjoy your experience and have fun. The lifelong uh, friendships you gain in social interactions on a university are on parallel. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Our next uh, panelist that we have is Debbie Sandoval, uh, class of 2018, Computer Information Systems, and she's currently employed at Infor uh, as a software engineering engineer. Uh, her works of encouragements are creative support network. They, they can be your lifeline support. Yes, no, yes. So uh, meaning more, I, I have known Debbie and, and I have seen her in so many, uh, involved in so many activities across campus. So thank you, Debbie, for taking the time. Um, let's get started with this. It's like, it, like I said, it's just a, a, a conversation across. I'm not gonna be sharing a presentation. It's just, we wanna hear what you have for our students and how you can relate to a student. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the first question um, for today. And it's gonna be, um, tell us about your educational and professional background. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with Debbie and then we follow with the next panelist. Hello, everybody. I'm Debbie. Uh, my educational background, I have a computer programming degree from San Antonio College. I graduated in 2016, but it actually took me about 16 years to complete. So it's never too late to go back, people. Um, I also uh, earned my bachelor's in information insurance with cybersecurity. I earned that in December of 2018. Mm -hmm. And that's basically all my educational background. Um, I, I took all the recommended classes. I even took additional classes of what I was interested in. For instance, my degree plan was based strictly, it was a BAS degree 
which was a bachelor's of applied arts and sciences and it's strictly it was more like business courses and it also had the cyber courses clear the networking things of that nature but i went ahead i since i like databases i went ahead and took made the opportunity and continued taking additional courses and they were senior level courses just so i could have that extra oomph when i was job hunting so that's that was basically you have to think about the future even when you're in college i mean you're in college for a reason but you have to think beyond college and you have to keep thinking about that because it doesn't end after you graduate technology changes every 18 to 22 months you have to stay on what's the top some of the a lot of the software engineers that i worked with they it's been over a decade since they've been in, inside a classroom it's been over a decade since they've learned something new and it's that's that's basically the difference what you're learning today is the top of the line it's like you're going to be amazed you're going to be hired at a company and they're still running their programs are written in cobalt which is like let's just face it cobalt is kind of like the roaring 20s think of it that way it's like the beginning of everything and nowadays you'd be amazed how everybody's systems are changing over to python and it's like and they're like oh i thought python is just a scripting language it is a scripting language but believe it or not they're using it now and java is now the main flavor it used to be c plus plus and now it's java so it it takes you have to keep you have to strive. That's what I did when I was in college. I even, I joined organizations like the Student Cyber Organization, and I think there's the ACM. And that is an awesome organization that you can join, especially if you're into programming and you're into computer science. These are the organizations you need to go out there. If you're only into networking, I'm pretty sure there's a couple of networking ones that you can join there on campus. Um, it's also, it's all how I, I networked a lot. I created study groups in my classes when I started. When I'm like, oh my God, this is hard. I don't know what to do. I created study. I asked, hey, is there anybody in the class that would like to be in my study group? I, I, I like to study a lot and I want to get an A in this class. So if you're serious about getting an A, please join me. And that's how I got my study. Yes, my first study group. And I'm still friends with them till this day like sa 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 who's the next person she did the same she was one of those people and uh marcella gonzalez and avery and oh my god there's so many people there that were in my study group and we still contact and communicate and network today as well in my current field unfortunately i was let go so i'm still job hunting and but it's okay you have to understand the coronavirus, a lot of people lost their jobs. So it's, it's okay. It's just a temporary situation. You just, and you gotta not let, like, let completely go. You gotta keep studying. Even like I'm, I'm graduated and I still study. So that's basically what's happened when I was in school and when I was out. And I, me and Saw started a, a, an alumni tech network so we can continue on networking with other people as well. Yes, thank you for sharing that, Debbie. How about you, Saw? So my educational background, and I can agree with what a lot of Debbie said about uh, languages and constantly having to grow in that. And I, I'm before I get into my educational background, like I notice even a lot of my coworkers, um, whenever I'm going through some of their resumes, I did notice that a lot of their technical background was back in the 80s. And some of that technology that they graduated with is no longer in use. And so, yeah, it's important to stay on top of that, however um, avenues you choose. But my educational background, so I, um, got my technical start uh, in high school. I went to a vocational high school where I majored in electronics technology and I took a few computer science courses and I just really enjoyed the subject, but it was really difficult to find, I guess, my place in the STEM world at first. Um, I think I got a scholarship to go to school for a liberal arts program, so I majored in English uh, at, um, at UT Austin, and I did that for a few years, 
and I really wanted to uh, learn more about the technical world and I dive right back in by enrolling myself at Texas A&M. So I hope that uh, no one kind of hates me for being, you know, an outsider, but you know, you're constantly uh, expanding on that. And I majored in information technology. Um, it was a BAS program as well. And I continued with that minor in English. Um, but yes, a, a few computer science courses uh, tossed in there as well. That's, um, and I'm currently working on a master's program at North Central University. It's for technology and innovation management. And so that's it in a nutshell. And yeah. Awesome. Basically, don't stop learning, right? Especially when the technology field is you have to keep up with the technology moving yeah. up. So uh, yeah. in order for you not to stay behind, you have to uh, yeah. run with that as well. Like Debbie said, it's, it's been updated every months. It's not yeah. years, it's months. So you really yeah. have to it's put yourself out there. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. So what are some of the skills that are needed in your role right now? And how have you... Ha focus on developing them over the time. And we'll start with you, Saw. What are some of the skills and how um, have you worked on developing these skills? So in a technical writing position, I did utilize a lot of my writing skills from the English program. So there's a lot of analytical ability that I develop in these courses while analyzing and researching like lots of just a lot of topics, you know, and, and you get really good at filtering out things. So that's one aspect. But then for technical skills, like I learned like a whole host of like software suites and things in my information security classes. I've learned about Kali Linux. I've learned about, um, yeah, there was a time I think we were port partnered with Infor. We did for our senior seminar project and we worked with the database there. So in our program, I've, I've learned to utilize a lot of software suites, which is really helpful because even though like I learned this, I can also use what I've learned in school and apply it to another alternative that's similar. Uh, maybe it's like a business proprietary software or something, but it's very similar to what I've worked with in school. And so those skills are also transferable. And I might have to do a little bit of supplemental learning, but at least I have my foundational knowledge there. Yes. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What about you, Debbie? Well, I, I, when I got my first job and I was helping and they said, oh, what we need you to do is we need you to pull data out of XML files. And I remember looking at one XML file at uh, Musa. So I had one week to learn XML on my own and it was just terrifying. But I heard this little voice and it sounded a lot like Dr. Barton. <laughs> And I just started, you know, I'm like, you know what, I can do this. I can do this. And I had to learn, I worked in, in a, an architect department doing AWS and I did a lot of all their scripting for them. And my, I really didn't do any scripting language it was when I was in my computer programming classes and I did object oriented languages, but I really didn't do any scripting languages. So I had to learn these scripting languages on myself, on my own. Like I learned Python on a weekend and I learned Python when I was doing the, uh, uh, what was it called? The Panathlon or uh, it was a, it was a competition there at Tamusa and they're like, you're going to be the programmer. You need to know Python. You have three days to learn it. So I actually did learn it and it, it was tough, but you know what? When I got my job, I'm like, yeah, I know Python <laughs> <laughs> and I was able to do it, but I also had to learn like Jenga and I had to learn other programming languages like shell script. And I, I knew a little bit, but I didn't know a lot. And you utilize your resources you have friends you have a network you have co-workers you can use these people to assist you as well they they won't say no they're there to help you in fact one of the software engineers that i was working with he's like you have great public skills speaking skills and I'm terrified of speaking. So because every two weeks we have get we had to do presentations in front of VPs. And 
he was a lot older than I am and I'm, I'm kind of mature. <laughs> and he, but he was helping me with my programming skills and I was teaching him, okay, this is what you got to do when you're doing your presentation. You got to think of this. You got to think of what your topic is. You need to have a, a you know, introduction. You need to have your body. You need to have your conclusion and you need to have your questions if they have any questions and you need to be prepared to answer those questions. And, and I had him practice with me because he kept going, um, 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 <laughs> I'm like, and I'm going to count every, um, <laughs> until we, until you're down to less than 10 and then we're, you're going to be okay. But it's, proactively learning the material on your own you need to get your certificates that's one of the things that i realized i didn't get when i was at tamusa and i wish we had a certificate program there if y'all want one let me know i'll help you out because certificates are very important if you get your certificates your certificates allow you to get to, to open the doors. Also, clearance is a lot important. Having a security clearance is like the golden ticket. You can find a job so easily if you have that security clearance. Now, there are companies who will take you at entry level and literally allow, they will pay for you to get your, your security clearance. Do it. Even if it's a, just a small two-year commitment. It, two years is small, folks. Y'all are yeah. young. Two years is very <laughs> small. So it's just a lot of proactive, a lot of networking. Your friends are there for a reason. You need to be, be good. You know, it's like, and let me tell you something else that you might want to, a lot of people, it's like in programming, I, a lot of people recycle their, their programs. Keep all your programs from your classes. Keep them, store them on some, some place. Because when you're in work, you're like, I remember doing this in class. You can pull from that and then you can use it. And it's okay to recycle your own programs, but be careful on something that you pull off off the internet. Because if you're working for a corporation, you have a lot of plagiarism abilities, but it's okay to recycle very basic programs what it's not okay is just to steal the whole thing because you're having to you have to learn what proprietary is i mean this is the difference there's no cheating here it's like it's easy to oh i see how they do it i think i can do that better if you're doing that that's okay that's what it's all about but it's also networking so it's like me calling hey Sa, uh how would i explain this because i have to give an outline of my program mm -hmm. and i'm not good at that so i'll call Sa and say hey Sa, can you do this for me oh, i'll call mars and it's just we're here for each other you need to have a network you need to have somebody to rely on i even contact some of my old teachers so it's it, tamusa offers you more than just a piece of paper. It also, it offers you personal growth and the May Center has it for you. Start your own study groups. It's just, it's all there. And it's there even after you graduate. That's the best thing. Thank you, Debbie. And you, you answer my, my next question because you were talking about how you can save your information, save your work, uh, keep it with you. That way you can refer back to it. Because my next question is, how do you, um, how did the time here at Texas A&M San Antonio prepare you for life and for work after your graduation? So um, I think you answered some of, some of that information in there, but we can go ahead and go with you, Sa, on this question. Yeah, so definitely I agree with Debbie in the sense that a lot of the projects that I've had in school, I still have all of my folders and all various projects to just jog my memory. And I also had like, even during to Musa and when I was were doing research, I also kept a lot of links and references in my annotated bibliographies. And sometimes I would refer to those links. Um, and also there's like a lot of open source software that I uh, refer back to often. And so a lot of the projects that I worked in my class, um, there was a project management class that I took with Dr. Birdwell. Uh, he was a former professor at Tamusa, but uh, definitely learned a lot about teamwork in that project. It was, uh, we were working on something for ESC, uh, yes, ESC Region 20, and they were talking about a telework program. And so we were looking at Gantt charts and um, learning about how to manage your time and all these various tasks and how to assign 
each responsibility to all of these things and delegate to people. And so, you know, it, it, at least in my experience, I know that some people have a project where one person's doing all the work and no one else is helping you. But in my experience, I was blessed to have teammates that we've shared our roles equally. And if we were unclear about using something like there was like a software that I had trouble with, like Windmill, I basically uh, talked to one of my team members to basically use that in Tableau. And it was like a graphic software. So there were just a lot of things that I was exposed to at Tamusa, and maybe we didn't go in in depth, but it gave me enough exposure to gain a broader understanding of how each of the software works. So I think those experiences, they're, they're still with me and they're still in my head and on my files, so. Yes, thank you for sharing that. I know I'm glad you mentioned time management is very big, especially in the student college life, we'll mm -hmm. say. And um, there's a meaning when a professor is, is assigning you on a group uh, project. Um, I was not fun of that under my undergrad as well. I was like, why do I have to do a project in a team? I can do it myself. But this is what it comes in the real world. When you out there in the workplace, it's, it's about team, it's about collaboration. So this is really, the teachers are really putting you in that perspective that you need to learn that collaboration and communicate in a team so you can all get an A in the assignment, right? So thank you for sharing that with, with us. Um, now I'm going to get into the next question is, what has been your favorite professional project? And I'll start with Debbie and then I'll go with Saw after that. And you're muted, Debbie. Um, wow, because there was a lot of projects. I but think the one that you you say this is like yes. Um, yeah, I, I think it was during my and, yeah, I really like I think I think it, the best one was during my internship. Mm -hmm. I uh, I worked for a healthcare, we made healthcare products like software. And so it, I went out of my way to learn the rules and regulations of something called HL7, which is basically it's the law, the, like everybody knows about the HIPAA. It's, this is basically the actual rules of how medical records are stored, like literally from how many bytes you need to what if it uses capital letters, if it doesn't use capital letters. And I made it a point to, I was working with that, but I didn't exactly know what it was, of course, because I never, I've never, I mean, I worked with healthcare and I have over a decade of healthcare call center experience. So I was familiar with the actual, like what you say, attributes. Like I knew what the records were. I knew what the medical records number was. I knew that it was nine digits. I knew all of these types of things, but to actually know what the law dictates to how big it's gotta be and how it needs to communicate. Cause we were, we were trying to develop software that one hospital could easily get the records from another hospital. And the reason, the logistics wise, why that's difficult is that for every bit of information, if you work with databases, every bit of information has a name to it. So like for instance, first name, last name. Well, it could be that in the other hospital, they don't have first name, last name, they have F name, L name, and those two are not gonna read each other. It has to be mutual. So we were trying to develop a mediary uh, database that can pull their own data and know exactly what it is, put it in a generic form to where the other hospital can pull it as well and easily get adapted to what they have and vice versa this way. So if you're from New York and you're in San Antonio and you're in a terrible car wreck, they can literally pull your medical records instantly or within a couple of minutes. This way the doctor knows that you're allergic to something, what your blood type is, all of this information, who your contact people are. It's, this is my, was my favorite project because I went above and beyond and actually learned the actual laws of how it was put together. And I was noticed because of that. And I took the initiative to do this. And I think that's, I got a lot, a lot, a lot of, um, recognition for it and after that they literally hired me full-time so it, it 
take initiative. Don't stand around and wait to be told what to do. And this can go in everything you do in your life. Don't stand around and wait to be told what to do. Be your own leader. There's always something for you to do. Whether even if you're working at a coffee shop, you can always pick up a rag, always dust, always mop. It doesn't matter. Be take the initiative. And if you don't know something, don't be afraid to ask. That was the one thing that I was, I'm never afraid to ask questions. So it's like, I try to tell that to other people. That's why I sit there in class with my eyes open listening and I engage my professor. And just the way that I used to do that, I do that in the work field as well with my boss, because let's just face it, we're all in this world together. And it's like, you got to treat everybody with respect. When you're working in that field, you need to be, don't be clicky. Think of everybody as there for you as a resource. Think of your coworkers as resources and treat them as resources and let them allow them to treat you as a resource as well. Be generous and be kind. Thank you, Debbie. What about you, Saul? One of your favorite professional projects that is that was the AHA project. <laughs> so um, in my technical writing profession, this is the first IT role that I have uh, uh, in my life so far. And I think uh, one of the things that even my supervisor noticed was that I take a lot of initiative with a lot of business development projects. And I really, and I've noticed that in the past too, whenever I've been in a lot of organizations where I'm in the startup phase, you know, like when starting up our a study group, for instance, and studying a, um, starting a diabetes group back in Austin, you know, I, I, I love that beginning phase and developing phase and developing that organization. So one of my favorite projects was um, developing a sort of capabilities presentation, basically diving into what the company is capable of. And, you know, it's taking a lot of technical jargon and translating that and being this technical liaison to share it with the public in a way that's easy for them to understand. And that's something really exciting for me to basically take this whole arcane world uh, that my coworkers are in and show um, to the public how amazing it is. And so I really put in a lot of time and effort into really understanding my coworkers' uh, projects, their skill sets. Um, I, I pour a lot of time into developing a presentation that's very clear and concise and developing a lot of white papers that allows me to even get an even in-depth study on uh, the technologies that are currently being developed that aren't necessarily out there yet and to be able to make that clear to you know the general public so uh, of different types of audiences and I've I think that's a quality that I think I also have with like language in a sense, just taking a language that's difficult to understand and making it easy and simple. And that's what I enjoy. And yeah, so that's one of my favorite projects. Thank you. Thank you. This, it makes a big difference for a lot of students when you really come forward and take the initiative on doing something, whether it's small, whether it's a big project, but always raising your hand and saying, yes, I'm available. Yes, uh, I'm on it. Yes, I want to study with you. When you start moving uh, the yeses up, then you'll get rated opportunities. Thank you for sharing that. So not everything's so sweet. We know that in the technical world, in the workplace, but let's talk about a challenge. Uh, what has been your greatest challenge uh, learning moment? so far in your career? And we'll start with you, Debbie. I believe she's frozen, but we'll start with you, sir. So. Okay. Um, so I'm going to probably also include uh, my educational experiences, because this is where I'm developing this technical background knowledge. And I think some of the challenges were just, um, again, learning 
a completely new language or learning a new computer programming language and you're in here and sometimes you have the professors that would like to go with you step by step and then there's other professors that likes you to just explore and they kind of just dump you in there and just have you play around with functions and break stuff and 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 just learn from trial and error and um Although I've experienced both sides, I guess, um, you know, I think I don't want to break stuff, you know, <laughs> I want to really take care of things. And so whenever I, in my career, I think whenever I'm uh, learning a whole bunch of new stuff, I take a long time to soak it in and basically um, make sure I have a very clear understanding and some of my challenges at least right now are um, just understanding the nuances in the contracting world and the government contracting world and that's something I didn't learn in school so there's this whole vast like legal space that I haven't really explored concerning regulations about turning in these proposals and contracts and, and grants and things uh, that I mean, I, I have to comply. Otherwise, you know, you go to prison, you get the company in trouble. And, and I don't want to make that mistake. And so I'm learning as much as I can. It's a steep, you know, sometimes a steep learning curve, but I'm willing to put in the effort into it and learning as much as I can. And I think it goes back to that idea of taking initiative for your learning process, making sure, and also asking your coworkers because they've done this before they they a lot of them are familiar with it this whole network you're not in it alone so if you're unclear with, about anything that's what i'm learning to do is to just ask just ask mm -hmm. debbie i don't know if you were thank you Saul. i don't know if you were able to hear the question but what has been your greatest challenge or learning moment across your career oh that's no. You know, that's a good question. I think it's mainly the fact that I don't have certificates okay. and I think I need more education and I think it's just being confident in what I do know and selling myself appropriately. I think that's, that's the biggest challenge for me because it's like, I, I, when I very first started working, I was like, I treated everything like I was in class and it was an assignment. Okay. And what I needed to learn was that I have these other people there to help me and I needed to be able to ask for help. I think that was my biggest challenge at first. I didn't want to, cause I was afraid well, what are they going to think, you know? And then I try to remind myself of who I am and what kind of person I am. And that my biggest challenge was to be able to, stop thinking like I'm in school and start thinking about the corporation, what I need to do for the corporation as like, like Sa was saying earlier, making sure I'm not doing anything illegal because we don't realize it because you know, it, you probably heard it in like your freshman class and it's like three or four years later and you're like, wait a minute, are we really supposed to do this? And mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of things it, it's, there is so much for you to learn the moment that you get there. Don't be afraid to ask. And now that I, like right now, I'm looking proactively looking for a job. Mm -hmm. It never stops. I'm trying to keep my, my resume updated. Saw so helps me. And mm -hmm. I try to keep my cover letters and I go in there and I mean, I have interviews and I think I did great. They say you did great. Of course, Corona just killed that. But mm -hmm. I think we're, they're starting to hire again. So I, I'm getting a lot of callbacks again. Thank God. So hopefully I will have a job soon. But it's just the biggest challenge is myself and how I think. So I literally suggest what you do is think about how you are now and think about how you want to be and what kind of person you want to be in five years from now, professionally speaking and personally speaking. Think about what, that kind of person and start working on it now, not then. Work on it now because if you start working on it now, by the time you graduate, you, you will become that person. Yes. Thank you for sharing, Debbie, on that. Uh, keeping that positive mind across, right? You are going to hit a lot of no's across your career. 
So we, you need to get used to it and you need to overcome that and, and start getting ready for the next opportunity. One door is yes. going to close and then another one's going to come in. So you have to be always prepared and always uh, available to learn and continue learning, especially in the technology area. Thank you so much for sharing that. So I do have an, uh, this other question is, um, and I'll share this, uh, send it to Saw. You had a mentor that helped you to transform you in this career? into this career. So I've always had people recognize my writing skills from a very young age. Um, and I was always um, a better writer, even I, I communicated better through writing. And a lot of people can see that it was a lot more eloquent to understand. So I've had various teachers kind of planted the seed of the idea of writing as a career but for me it just didn't seem practical at the time you know I was just like oh gosh I mean imagine publishing or dying it, it, it just the starving mentality kind of struck in my head and so I've always had that in my mind and I've had various people like nuns tell me oh you should be a writer and then stuff and so I think I've never, uh, Clarissa Tejada, actually, who's a, a counselor at the Career Services Center, she noticed uh, my English major background. She noticed that I was doing IT and she's like, you know, Saw, have you ever thought about technical writing? And I was like, Ooh. it might have crossed my mind, but let me explore that a bit more. Mm -hmm. And I think that when I interviewed at Deaf Logics, it was the first interview where I felt like, man, I did really good in this interview. I like how it was going. I loved how I answered the questions. It seemed almost intuitive. Like it was kind of striking at my talents. This is a career that felt right for me. And so I went ahead and applied for the job and it took them about six months to get back to me. I, I had to wait a long time. I know that they had other stuff going on because, you know, they're working with federal contracts and stuff. And at first I thought that, you know, I'll just look for other jobs and things until they, I actually went back to a job fair. Someone told me about it. And then I saw them again and I was like, hey, this position is still open. Let me inquire about that. And so I inquired the leadership team and one of the ladies was like, oh, I remember you. Let's, let's get you hired. And I was like, oh, great. And so, so my supervisor is really, I consider her my mentor, even though she's younger than me. She's been in this field for six years, you know. And, I, and so, I mean, I don't care about age. It's really about where your experiences are and what your interest and passion level is. And so she really helps challenge me to grow. Uh, in my technical writing and where is the room for improvement. So definitely professional groups have really helped me expand it on that. Yes, uh, thank you, Saw. You mentioned a lot of keywords in here uh, to explore you uh, challenges, professional connections. So those are a lot of keywords that students should be aware of right now that that's how we're really moving now in the workforce. You really have to explore. Uh, you need to really put your hands on it and then uh, follow up. What would it happen if you didn't follow up with that recruiter or with that uh, yeah. employee? So it's, it's, those are very critical keywords right now that will benefit a lot of the students. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to the last question and that will be for Debbie and, and what is a resource um, what is the resource for people that you want to dive in for learning more about your field? What's, what's a resource across the university or outside in the workforce? That is difficult. There are so many professional organizations that you can join. Um, like I know that there's like you can join <laughs> the alumni tech network where we're a small organization. There are, but what we're they, what we help each other do is we help each other grow. We're all about personal growth. We're a support group, a tech support group, but not really for tech for your education in tech because your education is never going to stop. And there's a lot of professional organizations out there. Like, I think there's, uh, what's it, uh, Dojo? I oh, Cyberdef Dojo. 
Cyber That's Jump a really Dogo. awesome group. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that one is a really awesome group. And there are other like, like national organizations that you can join as well. It's just basically like you got to be aware of what you need. Like it's all about self-development to me. Mm -hmm. it, to me, it's, you got to know what you need, what your weaknesses are, your actual weaknesses are, what your strengths are and where you need to improve. And once you know that, you can look for the organization that's gonna be best for you or best for your field. And don't limit yourself, don't pigeonhole yourself to one field. Because with the degrees that we get there at Daimusa, like I have an information insurance degree with cybersecurity and I was doing scripting language. I was being a, I was a software engineer. So it's like, I don't even think that was in my category for my degree, but I did have a programming degree, so th that helped as well. But it's just, you can, with our degrees, our tech degrees, you can wear so many different hats and keep yourself updated. Don't limit yourself to one thing. You never know what you're capable of. Nowadays, they want a well-rounded person and become that well-rounded person. And actually just work on you and when I mean work on you I mean professionally work on you like what do you want out of life how do you want to get there there's a there are people there who can help you and it's the organizations that help you and if you don't want to be in a big organization and just be a number then you can join my alumni network tech network mm -hmm. that means I created because we're all about self-development there and I remember when Sa couldn't even speak in public <laughs> <laughs> and she's amazing now. She's just, oh my God, her abilities are just incredible. But she's worked on that. She's really, yeah. really worked on that. And, and yeah, go ahead, Sa. Yeah, well, uh, uh, you know, yeah, the kind of resources are very personal to you. I took Toastmaster classes, mm -hmm. but to develop my programming, I went to Rackspace Cloud Academy. I went to Code Up classes. Those are free. They had Cisco meetup groups. They had, they have a lot of things that are tailored to you, and you can find them. They're there. And, They're there. And, yeah, and Geekdom has panels and things like that. And so there's a lot of different groups on, on Meetup, and you can find them. And if you need them, them I yeah. can share them with you. Yeah. <laughs> she Thank does you. all the time. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. I, I, I mean, it could, we come back to uh, being initiative, to initiate yourself, to take that, that time for you to learn and develop yourself professionally. So really, there's a lot of, t there's a lot of resources out there. You just have to really reach for them. So um, thank you for, uh, for all the questions and the great answers we have. And thank you for sharing so much information across. So um, thank you, Dr. Mary Cooper for this. We do have Roxana uh, Miranda here. She's an academic advisor and she's just gonna share with us a little piece of advice to our students in the academic side of it. Hi everyone, so I'm Roxana Miranda. I'm a College of Business advisor. Um, I advise students R through Z. I also have students on my caseload um, that are BAS IT, um, information assurance. So hearing um, kind of like the end goal and like your successes, I really love to hear that because it puts into perspective um, kind of what students are going through, coming into advising and advising these types of IT um, fields and then also like computer science and new cyber engineering technology program. Sometimes as an advisor, we're like, we know that these are the classes you have to take, but I'm not too sure like, you know, the languages and, and all those ins and outs. So I really, really appreciate um, the feedback that you guys are providing for students because I think it's super helpful to hear it from peers. Um, but I do encourage anybody who's looking to switch majors or if you're already in the, in the majors that are um, being covered today or related to uh, meet with your advisor to discuss your options. Um, we recently, had career coach uh, training with the May Center. So we're really trying to help you guys kind of develop and hone in on um, talent, skills, like where can we point you in the right direction when it comes to um, the careers related to your major and you know what your end goals are. So I invite you guys to um, you know meet with your advisor. It's not mandatory, but we would love to have these conversations with you all. 
Um, but yeah, I really, I really appreciated hearing all the feedbacks and yes to the certificates because I'm always like this plan will help you get the certificate or these specific classes. So we can also help you map out, um, you know, if you will be eligible for certificates upon graduation. I know Debbie has stressed that um, with her sharing with us today. Um, but yeah, we're here for whatever you need. Um, so visit us virtually um, for academic advising. Thank you so much, Roxana, and, and we are really, we did went through a very intense coaching session with, um, with academics to kind of develop and build that relationship with the May Center career coaching and uh, academics, that way we can guide our students better and share that same information across. So thank you, Roxana, for that, in, um, that tip for the students. So with that said, I want to just Thank you. I'm going to share my screen right now for our last um, a, a last slide for our students, which is connect with us. The May Center is available to help you out. We are going very big on social media. Follow us, connect with us. This information will be posted on, I mean, this, this conversation will be posted on our YouTube channel. So Thank you so much for that. And for our students, if any students who go back and watch the recording, you can always go back and uh, collect your attendance within 24 hours that you watch the video. So thank you so much, Saw. Thank you so much, Debbie. Thank you, Dr. Debbie. Thank you, Saw. Thank you, yeah. Roxana. Be good. Have a good day. Yes. Have a good Bye. day now. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>